Thank you, Joshua Murakami. An introduction to the volume conjecture free generalizations. Okay? Thank you very much. Uh, today I'd like to talk about some generalizations <coughs> of the volume conjecture. Uh, in my first lecture, I um, introduced the volume conjecture and proved uh, the conjecture for the figure in the case. And yesterday, I gave uh, kind of fake proof of the conjecture for, uh, for general notes. And uh, uh, to start with, um, uh, so this is the uh, original uh, volume conjecture. Now the linear chef is there. And uh, so you may wonder why we need the absolute sign there. And in uh, yesterday's proof, I um, maybe except for the last two sheets, I didn't use the absolute value sign. So it's natural to ask what is the so the log of the uh, absolute value means the real part of the log of uh, everything. So uh, one natural generalization of the volume conjecture is uh, its complex complexification of uh, stated as um, I, I, So um, can you see the red light? No. Ah, here. <laughs> this is better. So <laughs> you see that we have uh, imaginary part. And the, uh, the conjecture said that the imaginary part would uh, give us the Chan Simons invariant. And I don't want to mention uh, much about uh, Chan Simons invariant. But that, yes. that can't be correct. Uh, At least if you take standard branch of log, the imaginary part yes. is always between 0 and 2 pi. After dividing by uh, n, it goes to 0. <laughs> Do you have a right answer? Pardon? Do you have a right answer to the mod? I think you have to not not take the logarithm, but talk about the... Ah, the exponential. That's right. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. So, um... Talk about the asymptotics of the thing before you take ah, the logarithm. Yes. So, um... Yes, so um, this is not true. So, um... What I want to show is that the, the exponential, sorry, the Carl Jones rules ex exponential of n times volume of pi uh, times chan signs. Yes, you're right. So, uh, yes, this divided by n is misleading. Yes. Um, anyway, uh, we expect, uh, naturally, we have uh, as the imaginary part, uh, the chan signs. <coughs> And, uh, but uh, I don't know whether the transcendence is defined for non hyperbolic nodes. So uh, we may regard the left hand side as the definition of the Karachi also, the transcendence, if the limit exists. And uh, uh, as I told you yesterday, we can. Um, calculate the volume from um, triangulation depending on node diagram. So uh, I, I think we can do the same thing for the chan signs by using uh, Neumann and Zicker's uh, result on chan signs, a combinatorial way to calculate the chan signs. So um, next generalization. Uh, so in the Original volume conjecture, we have uh, n through unity here. So um, I'd like to change <coughs> the parameter to pi i here slightly. So uh, in the volume conjecture, the right hand side corresponds to the uh, the right hand side is the volume of the complete uh, hyperbolic structure of a knot complement and. Uh, 
So uh, in general, uh, the complete structure can be deformed into incomplete one. By, uh, so uh, as you know, uh, if you want to make a complete hyperbolic structure uh, from uh, tetrahedra, we glue them together and uh, glue them so that uh, the um, gluing condition, gluing condition around uh, all the edges uh, uh, should be satisfied. And moreover, we need uh, Euclidean for completing structure so that the uh, cusp is Euclidean. But if we forget that uh, complete structure, we may have incomplete structure. So uh, similarly, uh, we may expect that uh, uh, if we change the parameter to pi i, uh, then we may have uh, the volume of incomplete structure. So uh, that is, so we deform to pi i by a small parameter, small complex parameter u, and take uh, the uh, same limit, um, taking log and divided by l. And what do we have? Note that when u is zero, uh, this corresponds uh, to the, uh, the original volume conjecture or its complex complexification. Okay, so, um, and uh, again, I will talk about the figure eight note, because uh, so far, uh, uh, the known uh, solution to the volume conjecture is for only for the figure eight note. Um, will it? Did you do for five two nine? Uh, did you prove the volume conjecture for the five two no? Yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, the result with Yokota is as follows. So, um, we take u to be very small and not um, rational multiple of i i. Then this limit exists. And uh, so this is a function of u, a small parameter, complex parameter u. So we put uh, that function uh, to be uh, h of u after some uh, amount of multiplication by u plus to pi i. And then uh, this h of u is differentiable. And uh, if we take d of u to be the derivative of h uh, twice of derivative of u minus the pi i, then uh, this v function satisfies the following condition. Uh, so um, yes, here uh, so h function is comes from the limit of the conjunctions. And the u, u is the parameter, and v is defined here. And uh, I'll tell you later kappa of gamma sub u. And uh, figure mode sub u is uh, the uh, incomplete uh, hyperbolic structure of uh, the not complement corresponding to u, which I will uh, tell you soon. Mm. So um, this, this shows that. Um, if u is small enough, and then we can deform uh, the complete structure of the figure node, and uh, uh, by using the limit of the color Jones, we can have the poly and the chance of its uh, incomplete. Or uh, rather, we, we may say that this uh, is a dense theorem defined by u. So um, I'll tell you what is uh, figure not sub u. This is uh, ah. To start with, um, so uh, this is first. First of all, this is defined as uh, the uh, as a deformation of the complete structure by this um, representation. So um, okay, so. If we take a uh, representation such that the meridian of the figure node will uh, be sent to uh, 
uh, this matrix and the longitude is sent to this matrix. And then um, this defines uh, incomplete hyperbolic structure and we can complete it, complete the incomplete hyperbolic structure to get uh, close 3 by 4. Um, the, this is the close hyperbolic 3 by 4. So um, in general, uh, if you take this representation, we have incomplete structure and if we complete it, we may not have a three manifold. By completion, we may have one point complete, completion or uh, adding a circle. And uh, we assume here that uh, this gives uh, uh, adding a circle uh, completion and makes uh, the incomplete structure into a complete one. And the result is a close three manifold. And uh, if u is zero, uh, this representation gives you uh, the homonymic representation, that is the uh, representation corresponding to the complete hyperbolic structure. And uh, if u is not zero, zero, the structure is not complete. And uh, uh, so um, if we have uh, this representation, as I told you, we have in general incomplete structure, and by completion, we may add one point or a circle. And if we add a circle, that circle is denoted by gamma sub u. And uh, this is the picture of completion. So um, this is the figure of the complement, and uh, the green or the green one is the outside, and it has incomplete structure. And we complete the structure uh, by adding this gamma. And uh, by adding this gamma, it's, uh, voluntarily it is a tensor J, uh, if U and V satisfy this uh, equation. So here, V is um, uh, the image of longitude. And the kappa uh, appears in the formula here. Yes, here. Um, this is the length of the uh, gamma plus i times uh, the torsion for gamma. So if we, so if we test them together, this gamma is in uh, hyperbolic three manifold. So, um, uh, if we go around gamma, we have a length, uh, hyperbolic length. And uh, if we go around, we may be uh, twisted. So, um, suppose that we have a normal vector here, then we go around this gamma then the normal vector may be twisted by some angle. And this is called the torsion. And kappa is the length plus i times the torsion. And it is uh, complex, sometimes called complex length. And the uh, torsion is uh, modulo to pi. So this is the meaning of the right hand side. So again, uh, together with the limit of the color Jones and with this uh, geometric uh, quantity, we have the volume and the chance signs. And re remember that by uh, result of Neumann and Zagier, and also by Yoshida, uh, they proved that the, uh, the volume plus I times chance signs of a dense manifold can be obtained as um, analytic function of this parameter u minus pi kappa over 2. So um, this is something like that. So this part is uh, there. Uh, maybe um, we need to multiply by square root of minus pi. But anyway, this corresponds to their analytic function. So 
uh, this theorem says that we essentially have uh, Neumann, Zaki, and Yoshida's analytic function uh, by using the limit of the color Jones point, at least in the case of the figure. So um, then I'll calculate the left hand side of the theory, that is the limit of the color Jones polynomial of the figure. The technique is quite similar to yesterday's. So we first uh, use uh, this is a uh, Havilland Ray's um, formula for the color Jones of the figure. And we change slightly so that uh, we need a dialogue. So we change here to 1 minus Q to this angle. Uh, in my first lecture, I use Q to be something minus Q to something to get sine function. But today, I'd like to use dialogue function. So we use this uh, formula. And then we introduce uh, H of Z, W, H function, which is dialogue plus log. So um, as I told you yesterday, uh, we essentially have dialogue, but uh, we also have log term from exponent of Q. Yes, so um, this is dialogue. And I will show that uh, uh, if theta is near 2 pi i, then uh, the limit of the limit exists and satisfies this uh, formula. <coughs> Here, uh, y is chosen so that uh, it satisfies this equation. Now, um, as yesterday, I so uh, we first replace q with exponential of theta n, and uh, again, change the, so um, look at this uh, formula. So we first change the product. Uh, we approximate the product by uh, integral. So to do that, we take log. And uh, so this is, um, this again, uh, similar to yesterday's talk. Uh, this can be approximated by uh, dialogue function. And uh, in yesterday's talk, uh, this is <coughs> two tutor signs here, but today I have one. Uh, this means that we have, um, um, we have, we can precisely calculate the difference of these two, and we can estimate it properly. So our calculation is uh, rigorous. So anyway, we have a uh, dialogue from uh, the product. Therefore, the color Jones can be expressed as the sum of, uh, here we have a Q to be something. So we have exponential i theta and the exponential of n times some dialogue function. And we change, so we put uh, e to the i theta d here, then uh, we have exponential of, uh, because we need n over theta, so from, uh, so we need to, uh, we have, we have to add here uh, j theta square over n. And uh, uh, it is uh, exactly uh, uh, the same as this log term. So we need to add low term uh, because of this exponent term. So we get uh, the summation of exponential of n times this h function. And uh, this is, we again have uh, two uh, to the sums. But uh, this is not. Um, um, Good. Um, anyway, we choose uh, a suitable contour, and we can change the summation into an integral. Uh, but I, uh, I, I, I can't tell you uh, how we can choose uh, contour here. But this uh, again, this uh, summation is um, accurate. 
And then uh, we apply the so-called subroquage method to find the maximum for H function or uh, maximum of uh, maximum of real of H over here uh, to be precise. But anyway, uh, roughly we find the maximum of this uh, exponent and uh, which is equivalent to solving uh, the equation and which is the um, the derivative of h with respect to x is of this form. Uh, note that um, ah, yes, um, yes, theta is a given complex number so we can choose x uh, so that it satisfies this uh, equation. And uh, uh, so we find uh, y so that uh, it satisfies this equation. And this is a quadratic equation, so uh, usually it has two uh, solutions. But uh, because this is just a, a single summation, and this is just a uh, integral on complex plane, we can find exactly which solution uh, to choose. And then we choose y properly and uh, by the subroquage method we can explicitly, explicitly have this uh, symptotic. So uh, we have the limit of uh, uh, sorry, uh, I again drop log here uh, log of <coughs> the of n so take log and divide by um, n and multiply by theta we get h function here and note that y is a function of theta. So if we fix theta, we can choose y properly to satisfy this uh, symptom. Yes? Sorry? Drop what? Yes, 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 sorry, yes, I don't know. Yes, thank you. Yes, I don't know here. Yes. <laughs> so, um, we should be careful about this, but uh, roughly, if we put u to be theta minus 2 pi i, uh, the exponential of u is the same as exponential of theta, uh, we have this formula. But again, uh, we need to be uh, careful about the uh, um, uh, imaginary part, but uh, uh, this is uh, correct. Uh, formula, uh, where we put h of u to be the uh, h of y and exponential of theta. Yeah. So, uh, um, ah. there are, um, so I'm, we, I'm puzzled. Yes. I didn't really understand this, ah, yes. but in the, for the ordinary volume conjecture, the yes. proof depended on the fact that the volume, yes. well, the bit that contributes to the volume has a maximum. Yes. And now you've got a complexified version. Yes. Don't you so need that the imaginary part has a um, maximum at the same place then? So um, maximum of real part of this. Yeah. So um, theta is near to pi i. So in a sense, it is near imaginary, a purely imaginary. So we take uh, imaginary part of this, imaginary part of h, in a sense. Yeah. So it is similar to the uh, usual volume. And uh, let's see. Yes. So uh, volume comes from imaginary part of it. <coughs> yeah. So we take uh, the, in a sense, maximum of volume. OK. But why do you have any control on the real part then? Of the real part, if you're just um, taking maximum so, of the. So um, this is the um, point of the subtle point method. And uh, if you take, uh, for example, um, if you take the limit <coughs> of the imaginary part, then the real part is a uh, minimum <coughs> because it is a kind of subtle. So it is uh -huh. a maximum uh, with respect to imaginary, and the uh, on the other side. On the other hand, real is, is minimum. 
and uh, we will take the saddle okay. to, uh, to uh, the, the control goes through the saddle. So we need to change the control. Uh -huh. But the point is to find a proper uh, max control. So I'm two of, yes, there are two solutions to this equation. But uh, when, when theta is 2 pi i, we know the solution is uh, at uh, 6 root of unity. So um, the solution, the solution here, y, should be near the 6 root of unity. So we uh -huh. need to find near the solution. Uh -huh. So we have to take uh, theta to be near enough to, to pi i. Okay. So um, any questions? Uh, essentially, the way uh, the method is similar to yesterday's, one. but uh, the point is that we can do it uh, rigorously. Now, so yes. Now uh, this is uh, on the uh, left hand side. Now we uh, want to go to the right hand side, which is the volume calculation of the volume of uh, figure in the and uh, so the figure not component can be decomposed into two uh, hyperbolic tetrahedra, and we put Z and W are uh, the two uh, parameters of uh, the uh, um, tetrahedra. And then uh, the component is the union of two, and uh, um, so this is. This is the so-called uh, gluing condition to make the, uh, to glue the triangles <coughs> to, uh, we have two edges, so uh, we have two uh, gluing equations, but these two are equivalent to this one. So we only need this uh, equation, and we do not use the uh, uh, completion condition, which is given by this equation. So, uh, assuming only this one, uh, we have uh, generally incomplete hyperbolic structure. And then we introduce uh, parameters u and y. So, uh, this u and this y may be different from the previous one. Sorry. Uh, so, um, exponential u is uh, corresponding to the meridian, uh, wi minus z is uh, the meridian element. Uh, so, um, if you look at the cusp, uh, then you will see uh, z times 1 minus z, uh, sorry, w times 1 minus z uh, represents the meridian. And, uh, yes, uh, y satisfies this equation. Then, uh, note that uh, these three parameters uh, can be defined by u because uh, we have one solution. So, uh, for example, w is dependent on uh, z, and uh, w is also dependent on u, and y is defined by u. So, these three are uh, functions of u. And uh, uh, thanks to then we can use this formula. I'm happy to use this formula. So uh, uh, if a tetrahedron is parameterized by a complex number z, its volume can be uh, written in terms of dialog plus log and uh, yes, essentially log of z. Now, uh, by some calculations, uh, the volume of the complement, sorry, uh, we may need to do here. So um, we have two uh, hyperbolic uh, tetrahedra. Uh, both are parameterized, uh, parameterized by W and Z. And if we introduce U parameter here, then both uh, tetrahedra are parameterized by U. So uh, we can express the volume of this uh, past three manifold in terms of U. <coughs> and, uh, uh, because H is, uh, I, I think we need some formula for dialogue. But essentially, 
uh, h function is uh, the sum of two dialogues and log times log. So um, we, uh, we have this formula from a direct calculation. And now, uh, if we um, take the derivative of our h function, uh, we can see that we have log of z times z minus 1. And uh, so this is a negative form in this. So uh, the volume of the uh, incomplete hyperbolic structure can be calculated as this, like this. And uh, so uh, if we put v of u like this, then we have, ah, sorry, um, yes, here, v is just a half of, sorry, twice of this function, minus uh, 2 pi r. And uh, um, because of this one, we see that the exponential of v uh, can be written as uh, z squared times 1 minus z squared, which is uh, the longitude of a uh, cusp. So uh, um, if we look at cusp, uh, then the meridian is w, can be written as w times 1 minus z. And the longitude uh, is equal to z squared times 1 minus z squared. And uh, next, um, I need to relate uh, <coughs> uh, this term to length of uh, the uh, gamma sub u. Uh, remember that gamma is the attached, uh, the core of the attached solid torus of the inside. And this is uh, essentially, or this is done by Neumann and Zadier, and I, I will follow them. So if you look at the uh, holosphere, uh, which is uh, parallel to the uh, boundary of the uh, upper half space, and uh, um, so we assume that the meridian is, so um, Yes, so meridian is sent to this and this. And uh, on the uh, C plane, this acts on C by a uh, Mabius transformation. So meridian is just a uh, uh, yes. So by Mabius transformation of uh, that matrix, uh, correspond corresponding to the previous matrix, uh, we assume that meridian is just a uh, z times the exponential of u plus c times i. And uh, the longitude is sent to the exponential of v times z plus something. And uh, of course, uh, if u is 0, uh, this uh, gives the complete hyperbolic structure uh, because uh, both defines a uh, shift on a uh, translation on a c3. And uh, if u is non zero, uh, these two. Uh, have um, uh, two fixed points. One, one fixed point is, of course, uh, infinite. And the other one is this and this. And because uh, meridian as a longitude commute, so uh, they have the same fixed point. So the, uh, this um, finite fixed point should uh, coincide. And uh, if we change the coordinate, uh, we can change the coordinates so that the, uh, the same uh, fixed point is zero and the other one is infinity. So uh, meridian and both meridian and the longitude will, will send to uh, multiplication by a complex number. So this defines, uh, mu defines the multiplication by exponential u. So this is uh, rotation times um, enlargement. And uh, also, V defines the uh, uh, rotation and uh, enlargement. And that can be uh, described in this way. Now, um, we assume that the U defines uh, density, not the generalized density, so that the um, completion of the incomplete hyperbolic structure defines the density. 
And it, it corresponds to the case where, where PU plus QB is equal to, to pi times square root of four, minus one. We, uh, uh, so this is a general case. But uh, in our case, uh, we assume that P and Q are corporate integers, as usual, uh, the assertion. So, um, so we assume that you define the uh, PQ in surgery. And we choose R so that this matrix, uh, the, the, the determinant of this matrix is 1. Uh, this can be done because P and Q are corporate. And uh, then uh, gamma sub U can be uh, described as R times meridian plus S times longitude by using these R and S. Because uh, if you look at the uh, cusp torus, so um, uh, we, we attach, when we do dense surgery, we attach solid torus. And the meridian of the attached solid torus is defined to be this one. And, uh, and the gamma is um, uh, the longitude part. So the meridian uh, on the boundary of the solid torus, meridian and the longitude makes a basis of the homology. So uh, we assume uh, no, 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 uh, gamma sub u can be written like this way. So um, <coughs> now, uh, um, so um, if you take uh, this kind of uh, coordinate, uh, so r times u plus s times v, uh, so exponential r u times r u plus s v defines a, a complex multiplication. So the completion, completion is adding z axis. So it is a kind of rotation around z axis, yes. Can you choose R and B or are they determined? Ah. Sorry? Yes, Can you choose R and B <coughs> or are they determined by... Because in the previous slide you said choose R and B. No, no, no. Um, uh, if you choose R and S. Uh, S, I'm sorry. So um, this is uh, defined uniquely. Well, uniquely up to... Ah, yes. Um, and and plus and minus both side. both of P and Q. So, uh, so you know that this is just that um, on the core of the attached solid torus, we have meridian and longitude. And gamma u is the longitude. And uh, meridian is this one. So this is a, a kind of... Um, you always can to R and Q to S, you still have this determinant ah, equals sorry. one. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So, uh, yes, sorry. Uh, so we choose this. And then 
Um, uh, yes, oh, sorry, yes, 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 you're right. So, uh, no, it doesn't, I think it doesn't matter in the end, because you're going to be changing, you're going to be exponentiating. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, choose, yes, yes, so Gregor is correct. So choose uh, RSO that the redundant of this is 1, and put, or we may assume that gamma u can be expressed like this. And of course, um, there are ambiguity of uh, longitude. Yeah. But it, it doesn't matter, because uh, here we use expansion, so the ambiguity disappears. So, um, so here we take load, but uh, indeed we take exponential. So this is, uh, you see, um, e to the u, which is um, the median corresponds to the multiplication by e to the u. And we do r times, we do it r times. And then we do longitude s times, and this gives a uh, um, rotation and uh, enlargement, multiplication by a complex number, and uh, so uh, on the c plane, and we look at the z plane. So um, our completion, uh, our completion is just adding z axis. And on C plane, we have a complex multiplication. And correspondingly, we have um, uh, enlargement of Z, which is just a so, uh, absolute value of the, this exponent. And the rotation is the um, argument of this number. So, um, yes, so, uh, so by multiplying this um, complex number uh, on C plane, uh, we have on Z plane um, a multiplication by exponential of uh, yes, the enlargement corresponds to this part, the real part. Yeah. And the uh, uh, rotation corresponds to this imaginary one. And uh, which should be um, up to some uh, um, up to sign uh, exponential of uh, R u plus S v, which is the gamma of u. So exponential gamma of exponential gamma is a uh, um, is multiplied by um, Yes, so um, on C plane, we have a kind of rotation plus enlargement. And the completion is just adding uh, uh, the origin. And the, on the upper half space, uh, we have similar situation. We, we just add Z axis. And uh, um, the point here is push to uh, exponential of leg, which is uh, the length of the uh, gamma. Yes. So, uh, yes, I write it here. <laughs> so, um, so um, the, the length of gamma can be uh, given by this part, which corresponds to exponential plus or minus uh, real part of it. And the uh, rotation corresponds to the imaginary part. So, um, PU plus QV is 2 pi pi uh, from here, and on the other hand, uh, RU plus SV is uh, plus minus uh, of uh, length plus um, pi times torsion. So, uh, by solving um, 
this equation, uh, we have the rate is uh, plus or minus uh, of 1 over 2 pi times imaginary part of u v bar. And we, uh, we choose the negative sign so that u and v, u and v makes a positive coordinate on c. Uh, so um, I proved uh, um, So um, uh, here, uh, I express the volume of the uh, incomplete hypothetical structure in terms of H function and uh, U and V. And we want to uh, express uh, this term in terms of uh, length of uh, the um, habit. <coughs> Now, by a simple calculation, the uh, length <coughs> of gamma u can be expressed like this. So, uh, the volume can be. Uh, so, uh, if we replace um, u times v uh, with length of u, so uh, uh, if we take real part, then um, this becomes imaginary part of each u, and this becomes real part of u, and uh, this gives you a uh, length of gamma, and uh, combining this and this, we get a uh, real u times imaginary of v. So we have uh, proven the real part of our formula. And uh, the the imaginary part uh, is obtained from Yoshida's formula. Uh, he shows that the, um, the, yes, the, ima the imaginary part of this one will give you uh, the chance signs in five. What was K? Yes. K? What was K before the K? By K U. The last step, pi k gamma u. Okay. Ah, uh, this is the uh, length times i times torsion. The length times what? Length plus pi times torsion. Okay. And the uh, torsion gives the chance segments. Yeah, this is your Schiller's formula, uh, which was um, conjectured by Neumann and Zagier. Okay. So um, the if we know uh, the, how to calculate the uh, limit of the color Jones, uh, it is not so hard to guess uh, this formula holds. But of course, the um, analysis is uh, difficult. But it, it, this is not so surprising. And uh, in general, we conjecture that for at least for a uh, hyperbolic node, um, if we assume that u is small enough, then the limit exists. Uh, so, yes? Not, not purely, uh, ah, yes, yes. Um, rational, mm -hmm. rational, not rational multiple of pi pi. Yes. Except for zero. Except for the pen. So, yes. Your then it's false. Ah. Yes. 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 But also, it's a conjecture about the asymptotics of um, Jn before you take logarithm. Ah, yes, yes, so, yes, thank you. Um, maybe it's better to express in that way. So, uh, we drop n and drop go. So, J, yes, yes, yes. So, um, the asymptotic of J is exponential n times this function. That is a proper uh, statement of our conjecture. And mu uh, is small and not a multiple of rational multiple of um, pi i. Yes. And uh, yes, so we <coughs> um, then the, uh, the exponent becomes a function of u. 
the part I use. And uh, uh, the function is differentiable with respect to u. And if we differentiate h and make a v like this, then it will give uh, the volume. So together with uh, h function, u and uh, v here. And uh, uh, we want to say something about chunk Simons, but uh, um, you know, um, kappa, kappa here, uh, length and torsion is a very geometric quantity, so uh, I don't know how to express it in terms of u and v. Uh, so u corresponds to meridian and v corresponds to longitude. But at least for our volume, we can express in terms of u and v. And uh, uh, as an appendix, as uh, Stavros said, uh, so this is the conjecture and uh, the theorem for we get not is uh, for parameters near to pi i. On the other hand, uh, there's a theorem by Galfaridis and Tande of where uh, our parameter is small enough, so near zero, uh, the limit does exist, and it is one over uh, the other zander. So, uh, the problem is, so in the previous conjecture, it is a parameter near to pi i. And this is a theory about a parameter near zero. So the question is, what happens between 2 pi i and zero? Of course, uh, this is also noted by Stavros. Uh, if exponential a is a zero of the Alexander, the limit does not exist. So, um, so we, um, so uh, <coughs> uh, what, what exactly happens? So th th there should be a, a kind of jump from convergence to uh, divergence, and uh, I don't know what happens uh, between them. So uh, this is one of the first of the appendix. And last of all, I'd like to answer a couple of frequently asked questions. First text is... <laughs> the answer, uh, uh, most of you know. <laughs> This is a very, very common uh, question that I've been asked. And uh, recent, quite recently, I'm asked another question. <laughs> Do you know him? Uh, Haruki Nakano. His um, latest novel sells one million. <laughs> <laughs> so I've I, I heard that he's also quite popular. Not uh, uh, only in Japan, but also uh, many other countries. And the answer is not no. The answer <laughs> is never. <laughs> okay, so that's all. Thank you. Pi over 6 is not the 
turning point. It is. It's because two branches of the ah. A polynomial collide. I see. But That's um, the first uh, I think up to pi over three, uh, the color Jones converges. Yeah. So pi over six is a hidden turning point. But it is a turning point. But the, it is. Uh, uh, I see. I see. I see. Uh -huh. I mean, turning complex turning point theory, mm -hmm. complex WKD, an established theory mm -hmm. for quantum structures with polynomial potential. It explains the, mm -hmm. how you pass from one mm -hmm. to the other. But uh, are you talking about a purely, purely imaginary parameter? No. No, in general. It's complex WKD, not real WKD. So um, you, uh, I assume that it is a one summation, not the Martin. No, no in general, any summation. Yeah. It's not the proof of the statement, mm -hmm. but it's a computation. Uh -huh. You can locate the terminal points, you can locate uh -huh. the so called stove slides that help uh -huh. you, uh -huh. which we can very dominant or not. Uh -huh. But mathematically, the theory. Thank you.